So first of all, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it means a lot because uh, I know it's, uh, it's a work day. Not everyone is free right now. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, so basically the, the reason we are setting up this webinar is for people to get to know more about the NSW regional options and study option as well. Because usually you only get information for the migration side or the study side. You don't get information from both the, uh, uh, both sides. So we, so what we have done is uh, I am a migration agent at uh, Asia Pacific Group. So I'm here. And my colleague, Ms. Rovensi, she is our uh, senior education counselor with uh, over a decade of experience in education. So uh, she's the best person to help you with the right courses, right course changes, or when you, some people just have a question like, what do we study? And if you want to go to Regionia, then what? The question mark is, what do we do? That's what we're going to answer today, okay? So obviously there'll be a lot of, um, so remember one thing, uh, just a disclaimer that, um, we are going to tell everything uh, based on uh, of what we know, uh, what's going on in the market and what's going on in terms of NSW nominations. And obviously, uh, um, basically, if you want to act on this information, please do contact us. So that way, uh, so yeah. So basically, if you want to act on this information, please do contact us. Uh, 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 all you need to do, just drop us an email at, uh, and we'll share an email uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, basically, uh, webinar so the goal is basically um, if you want to move to the right study or the right course you should know like what are you studying so that all will be answered to you but do remember that uh, 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 just to make sure that if there, if you need particular advice and you want to act on it before you invest thousands of dollars to study something before you invest hundreds of dollars to do something different do let us know okay and we'll guide you how to get it done properly okay so now yeah so first of all i have a uh, great news for you all okay so uh, the best part is basically the new migration air so the new migration air they have announced uh, uh, basically the number of seats are available for the next migration air and the numbers are amazing like this is like in my career I've, this is one of the few times i'm really really happy and proud of NSW uh, and proud of uh, federal government that they're trying to improve the number of seats available and they're trying to make things easy. They're trying to make things uh, much more reasonable. So this is actually a very good time basically right now for NSW, especially for people in NSW or people who are overseas or in a different state and want to move to NSW. So this is actually a good time. And especially if you talk about the regional options, it's the best time to make a move. Okay, so now let's move to the numbers. Now, why I'm so excited about this, uh, the new migration is because the numbers, the employer sponsorship visa has gone from 22,000 to 30,000. It's still independent, which is called 189 visa, which is um, like, this is the kind of visa we want for most of our clients. Uh, it was a dead option for the last one or two years, pretty much two years. It, they have increased the seats to 16,652. And when you talk about the regional option, they have taken, uh, uh, guys, please, uh, uh, can you mute yourself just to make sure uh, you can hear me clearly because other people will be hearing a lot of uh, noises. Right? Thank you. So basically, the regional visa, which is, um, again, the backbone of the regional economy, has gone from 11,000 to 25,000. The state or territory nominated visa, which is 190, is a PR, has gone from 11,200 to 20,000. And uh, bus uh, business innovation visa has, gone, uh, has reduced, which is good for us because if uh, the business innovation visa is reducing if global talent is reducing so it gives us more seats more flexibility for 189 190 and the 491 right so that's a good thing and if you see the skill total number it has gone from 79000 to 109000 which is amazing so this is in a long time there has been an increase rather than a decrease so if you look at the numbers 189 has increased by 154 percent is more than double 190 has increased by 79%. Hi, everyone. Uh, guys, please, can you mute yourself? There's a lot of... Uh... All right. So I muted them. I had two. Okay. So, yeah. So basically, uh, for 190... Me. Yeah? Yeah, it will be appreciated if you can mute by your end. Yes, I already muted them. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, yeah thank it's, you. It looks rude to mute from my side. That's why I try to like, let people do it themselves. So yeah, but anyways, I've done it. So yeah, so now everyone else, just please uh, mute yourself. Yeah, so basically for the 190, 11,000 to 20,000, 79% increase. 
491 has gone from 11,000 to 25,000, 123% increase, more than doubled, right? Uh, and employee nomination, again, gone from 22 to 30,000, 36% increase. Now, if you notice the overall number, o overall number has increased by 80%. Now, what this shows is that immigration is in full swing. They want people to come in. They want people to migrate to Australia. They want people to move to regional area. They want people to move to different states. So things are finally happening. Now, for us to take advantage, we need to know how it will work because just because increasing the seats, uh, the increasing seat doesn't mean you will get the invitation. So we have to plan accordingly as well, right? So for example, if you still stick to an accounting, for example, which is one of the worst occupations right now, you will still struggle. No matter which state you are in, no matter what you're doing, you will still struggle. It won't be a walk in a park for, let's say, a nurse, let's say, a volunteer tiler, let's say, a chef. For life for them would be much easier to migrate. For, uh, for everyone else, it's going to be harder. So again, we have to, when you look at these numbers, a lot of these numbers will fall onto the occupations which the immigration wants. You know, the immigration wants to promote. So that's very important. So now, uh, now, uh, yeah. So in terms of NSW, NSW's last year, the, the current year's allocation was four thousand and thirty six forty for the one ninety and four ninety one respectively. So if we look at the new number and uh, 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 use the same percentages, let's assume NSW still gets a lion's share like it got last year. So we should be getting about fifteen thousand uh, uh, seats. Now fifteen thousand seats mean a huge difference in the approach NSW will take. Now what it means, but this is. See, this is our job to decipher it for you. But what does these number mean? Now, this number, this would mean that suddenly NSW has doubled the amount of seats in their pocket. So how can it be that they can uh, uh, keep the requirements really hard if their seats are doubling, right? So that means requirements will be easier. Things will get easier. So they will make it more pro-migration. Okay, so that's actually a good indication like what's going to happen for the next migration year. So we have to get prepared now. Okay, so now again, just to give you a little brief, a lot of people here, I can see some, some uh, uh, familiar names. Uh, they have been with us attending a lot of our webinars previously as well. So the, for the new ones, we'll just give a little brief so you can get up to date about this. So NSW skill migration will have two visas, 190 and the 491. And 491 is not a PR. 190 is 190 is a state nomination of PR that you really want to get go for. For the 491, it's just a TR, it will convert to PR after three years, and the visa would be called 191. Now, the requirements for converting from 491 to 191 would be two requirements number one, you have to live in a regional area, and number two, you have to work in a regional area and you have to earn at least 53,900 per annum. Okay, now this amount is doable especially considering the fact that there are a lot of people who move to regional area and they are getting decent jobs i've recently there was a time back in four years back five years back uh the clients would complain you know that there are no, no good jobs are available right now a lot of things are happening in regional area as well so that's another good option and by regional the simple definition of regional area is all of australia minus sydney brisbane melbourne that's a simple definition of a regional area all right now let's move to the next slide so basically for the 190, now 190, the basic requirement for NSW remains the same that you have to have uh, basically resided in NSW for the last three months, or you should be working in your own occupation for at least even a single day and you'd be considered a NSW resident. And in terms of the points, they say minimum 65 points, but it means nothing. What they really want to say is that they want you to be uh, work, uh, basically having high points. So the goal for NSW is they want people to compete with each other. So if you're a software engineer, you might be earning one. Yeah. All right. So basically, so, uh, sorry, but I think, uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, so they want you to compete. So it doesn't matter how much you earn, what your profile you have, if your bottom line, the points, you don't have enough of them, you would not be invited. So that's why when I say competitive, it's, we are talking about 90 points. We are talking about high points. You know, it depends on the occupation. If you are a social worker, then 85 points. If you are a marketing specialist, 85 points. Uh, by the way, marketing specialist got removed from NSW. It will probably come make a comeback, but not anytime soon. Um, IT, 90, 95. Accounting, 105. So it depends on what occupation you are in. And based on that group, you will be uh, 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 basically you have to compete against. So 
and also you have the like general skill you have need a skill assessment for nw and you need experience for certain occupation groups now what do i mean by that i mean like this now for manager groups three years experience is required like hotel manager cafe manager restaurant manager you know occupation like that for accountants you need three years experience for enrolled nurse you need three years experience it occupation you do need three years experience trade occupation you do need three years of experience now if you notice IT and trade occupations are in this list when you need three years of experience to be even be eligible to apply for the NSW 190. Now, why is it? Because NSW has so many applicants because as you know, there are so many universities here, there's so many colleges here that they're, they're the one of the, like, it's like the biggest city in Australia and, and we get the biggest share of students. So the seeds were not enough. So they had to make, take the uh, requirements up a notch just to make sure that only the best can, you know, uh, get uh, eligible and then can, they can be invited. So because of that reason, we have to, uh, we have to keep in mind that if the seats are increasing, this requirement will probably go away. There's, again, I, I'm not, I can't predict it, but uh, from my personal opinion and professional opinion, I would assume uh, the way things are going, the direction things are taking, uh, probably July around the turn of the migration year. Uh, uh, and by the way, when I say new migration year, I talk about 1st of July. That's like the new migration year. Okay. So what happens is around new migration year, when they, the occupation list are shuffled, they changed, things are added, things are removed. So what happened in this situation is that you have to, uh, they will have to revisit the whole requirement. So they know that there's so many seats available. Everything will go to waste. Honestly, three experiences are very hard. How can you ask a, a young guy who's 25 years old, who just graduated to have three years experience? They can't, right? So, and now see new students, yes, the master students get three years of four to five visa nowadays, but that's just started in November. So those people are not even graduated. They're not even completed the four to five yet. So this is not going to sustain. So this will change and we will be ready for it, right? So if you have done a homework, now comes the phone nine. Now, just to give you an idea, like, uh, this is the map of regional area. Now, if you notice, uh, there's Orana, there's Far West, Riverina, there's different places and different cities are located to it. And these are called RDS, Regional Development Australia. Okay. So these are basically regional offices who invite you. Okay. So when I say what RDA, we mean a regional development office, like office, there will be one or two people employed over there and their job, their task would be to promote the migration in those particular regions. Now, a lot of people get confused about it because they assume that NSW is all one body. It's not. NSW 190 is get, given through the federal government, uh, like the state government. Uh, and for the RDA, for the 491, it's a mixed responsibility thing. So. And the government, state government is required, uh, is concerned and also the regional bodies. So you cannot be invited from, let's say, Orana without the authority from Orana, someone in RD Orana who has to approve you. If they don't approve you, you cannot get the invitation, no matter how many points you have. So it's very important. We try to make sure that we meet that criteria as well. Now, all these regional areas, by the way, have their own list. Okay, so when, uh, like you would have heard uh, like uh, this uh, 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 invitation out as well, the 1st of March, that this region area is closed, Rivina is closed, or Murray is closed, because when they're full of uh, uh, the people, they don't need any more people, they just close their uh, uh, invitation out. So that's why when we apply, we have to check, because we can't just blindly apply for Orana or Ilawara without any calculation. We have to calculate like how many people are applying there, what kind of jobs are available there. For example, if you're applying to some place and they are in, they are a touristy kind of a place, obviously chefs will be required there. Obviously cafe restaurant manager will be required there. So that will be, they will be more pr prone to make it easier for you. They'll make it much easier for you to get the invitation, right? So that's why we look at the character of the regional area and see what kind of people they do they need and we attach the right people to the right region areas. Now that's, again, there are a lot of calculation we have to do for that, but generally the idea is we look at the jobs, we look at the job market, we look at the city, we look at the general industries available there and based on that we connect it. And also the occupation list helps us to, you know, get an indication. So this is just one side. Now for the four nine nine, the basic eligibility is very basic. So anyone can meet it if you think about it, that uh, you need 65 points and a skill suspend and you need to be uh, 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 basically meet the requirement for stream one, two, or three. Okay. So now what are those streams? Now, when you go with streams one, two, and three, 
Stream one is for people who are living and working in NW regional area. Okay. Now these are people who are working in their own field. Okay. So first stream is all is the best stream actually. This is where if you work in your field. So for example, if you're if you're a chef and you're working as a chef for the last six months or three months or something, you can apply for this. Now officially the requirement was officially one year. Then you have to spend 12 months in a regional area doing this uh, uh, work, basically your own occupation. But they realized there's hardly anyone left with one year experience. So what they did was they made it three months. So anyone with three months of experience can also apply for the stream one. So, and the best part of stream one is that the points don't matter as much. Right now they do because the seats are very limited and things are very competitive. So yet they taken up, uh, they're looking at the points as well, but generally they don't really care about the points. Okay. So, and when the new migration starts, points will take a back. See, the main thing would be, did you work or not? That's the first thing. The second stream is people who have studied in a regional area. Now, when you say study in regional area, now this is what we're targeting. So in this uh, later part of this, uh, webinar as well, you notice we got you a lot of courses, a lot of, we, uh, we did our research, we did the homework for you so that you can know exactly what you can hit, what you can do to make me this requirement. Or let's say your cousin or your friend or your brother or sister, they're coming from overseas. So what do you recommend to them? So we have done that homework for you. So we, you will know by the end of uh, this webinar. So this is again, a very good pathway because very few people go with this because most of the people who are going with stream two, they are already targeting 190 because they have an extra five points for region area and the people who don't have good English, then they go for a phone nine, but then their phone nine is nearly guaranteed because they are going with a stream where very few people are applying for. So, you know, it's like a demand and supply kind of a thing. So stream two is also a very good option. Now, then we move to a stream three. Now stream three is for people who have, now this is for both kind of people. Like there are a lot of occupations which have been open for the overseas people and there's a lot of, uh, and you can even apply from Perth if you're living in Adelaide. You live in Sydney, you can apply for this. You, you don't need to move to a region area for stream three. So this is for people who are applying based on the points. Okay, so if you just want to make a simple mind map, think of like three streams. First one is working in your own field in region area for three months. Number two, work is studying for two years in your field for two years in a region area. And number three, you have enough points, you can apply for it. So you need the brute force of your points to apply. Now, when you talk about the brute force of points, you're talking about really high points. We're talking about 90, dip, again, depending on the occupation, but we need points. Now, just to give you a, a just rundown, because obviously it's a complicated process. There are a lot of things to consider, but just to give you a rundown of the, uh, the, uh, the process, you know, how it works, basically. So first of all, you check the eligibility, like whether you're open in that RD or not, whether you're open in that, uh, four nine one stream or not. So for example, if you're applying for an occupation, which is not open in stream one, then you can apply for it, right? So we have to look at that element. So first you check the eligibility. Now, again, we are there for you. So we can assist you with those kind of things. So don't worry about it. We'll check your eligibility for you. Second thing, you lodge expression of interest. Expression of interest, you lodge at the skills select website. You lodge, it's an ordinary application with your points, 60, 70, 80, whatever your points are, you put it there. Third thing is ROE lodgement. Now ROI is all about basically which regional area are you applying for and which stream are you applying for? So they'll ask you those questions. So like is it stream one, two or three or occupation or which uh, region area is Illawarra, which is Wollongong or Hunter region is Newcastle. Like where are you applying? And you know, they'll ask you those kind of questions there. And then when you, when you apply for it, then you wait for the invitation. Now ROI is applied basically in the, in the window. Now they've opened four windows in the current year. Okay. And they're going to, they're probably going to do the same thing for the next migration year as well from the 1st of July. So, so what happens is they give you like, if I give you the simple example of the last, for the current migration year. So what they did was they opened up in uh, August, October, January, and then March. So what they did was every month from the 1st of, let's say from 1st of January to 31st of January, you can apply for it. And when you can apply for the ROI registration of interest, they will put you in the queue. They look at your profile, everything. They invite your based on your occupation, your points, everything. So once they invite you, they give you another fourteen days to apply for the RDA. Remember the RDA we talked about. So we go back to the RDA, and they pay their fees, which is eight hundred dollars. You pay the fees, and what they do is they will approve us or refuse us. And, and usually RDAs take two to four weeks to come through, but sometimes they take longer, sometimes shorter. But again, the every RDA, they're, they're like thirteen or fourteen of them. So 
every RDA is slightly different from, from the other. So we have to look at those uh, 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 elements as well. So when you go, uh, uh, go with different RDAs, they have specific criteria as well sometimes. But again, that's part of like, we can obviously we do our homework before we even apply for in the first place, right? So for example, if you're applying for Illawarra, we know exactly what they want. So we target their particular requirements. So that's one thing. So once that is done, you wait for the uh, uh, invite. Then once they invited you that yes, all good, he approved you, then you apply the visa within the 60 days period, okay? So this is just a rundown of the procedure, like how the procedure works, okay? Now move to the next part. Like uh, we had an invitation round uh, uh, like last Friday, basically. So for the 491, uh, it was a decent round. It was good. They invited a lot of people, but they also consider the fact that this was the last round. So it, it, they, there's not a much round left after this. So for chefs, uh, again, this is as per our client. So uh, obviously there are a lot of firms, a lot of people, a lot of agents, uh, they have their own invitation list, but this is based on our clients. So for uh, we had a chef, it's team one, uh, who got invited 75 points. Okay. And, uh, and again, we have, the thing is we applied for different chefs at different places because the goal was we wanted to not apply for everyone in one region area because sometimes if they get too many applications, for example, I'm sending seven applications for chefs in far south coast or in Illawarra. Obviously, if I'm sending 10, then other agents are also sending over there. So that means the demand might not be enough. So we have to divide it up a little bit. So what I did was I got in different places. So we got some from South Inland, Southern Inland, some for Orana, some for Illawarra. Illawarra is Bolamo, by the way. Okay, so uh, NEC, we got inv invited from two different locations, Far South Coast and Northern Rivers, and the points were 70. Okay, again, this is a nurse, on, recent nurse are again in high demand. Then we talk about the uh, recent nurse age care, again, 80 point Ura, from Urana. Ura, by the way, Urana is one of the, actually, Urana is the largest uh, um, RDA by area, and they are in, in high gear growth mode right now. So they are doing a lot of, they're making a lot of industry industries, growth, everything happening there. So that's why Urana, if you notice for the last two, three years, they've been very active. They've been inviting a lot of people. Then we got two invitations from civil engineers. One was stream one, one was stream three. Stream one was at 80 points uh, from Southern Land. Stream three, if you notice, is the point based. So if you notice the other person got invited for so stream one at 80 points, but this person got invited 90 points. Now what's the difference between the two? The difference is this person is applying probably from Sydney or Perth or some other state. Okay. Because our clients, so we can't diverge too much this, uh, details on, onto this, but I'll just give an example. Like this person, uh, is not in region area. I can assure you this person not, not living in region area, never even set foot over there. He still got the nomination because the logic was he had the right points. So that's it. That that's it. Now enrolled nurse again, a very good occupation. A lot of people can do it. It's not the most expensive occupation. It's not the most hard occupation. It's not the, uh, and it's a good career prospects, good PR process. It's actually a good occupation. Enrolled nurse from stream three, 80 points. Okay. So again, you can see like, if, even on stream three, it doesn't mean you have to compete at very high points. 80 is a doable. 80 is very much doable for most people. Even if you're just 25 years of age, you have done bachelor, ever, in, ever, anywhere in your life, you have done Australian study, you can reach 50 points if you have, uh, you're single, you get 60 points. You have 70, you get 80 points. You already have 80 points. That's it. So it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to get to 80. Okay. Then there's another occupation called community worker. Now this is again a good occupation. Uh, now this same person, I was planning for her to get uh, 190 nomination for an SW 190, but the invites were coming very slowly. So we had to make a judgment call and we went for the phone even, but she was at 85 point because uh, recently community workers need three years of experience after 22nd of December, before that they didn't need anything like that. So now they need experience. So again, a good occupation. And she got invited for Sydney RDA. Again, Sydney RDA is a thing because a lot of people think that Sydney is like a metro area, that's it. But when you look at the Sydney map, Sydney is like Sydney RDA map. Sydney RDA is pretty big. You could be living in Windsor, Richmond, you could be living in a Blacksland, you could live in Katumba. This is all part of Sydney RDA, Hawkesbury region, all of these places. So, Sydney RDA is a hidden gem. That's why uh, we focus on Sydney RDA as well because a lot of people, they focus so much on the regional area. They go to the far flung of NSW, but you don't need to. You can just go to Windsor, Richmond. So you have those options available. But again, I have a surprise for you as well. Towards the end of this uh, um, 
basically a webinar. We have uh, a surprise guest who will guide you about Windsor, who will guide you about uh, the, the courses in Windsor, the, the, the option you have available, literally 30, 40 minutes away from the main uh, Greater Sydney. So it's, and it's so close. It's, there, there's a train that goes through Windsor. So, you know, so we have their option. At that. Anyways, so let's move to the next part. Uh, I think uh, for this part, I will uh, ask my colleague, Ms. Ravensi, to take over. She's our senior consultant, as I told you. She's um, she's the expert in education department. So uh, I'll let her take the lead and uh, uh, take it over from here. Ravensi? Thank you, Director Usman Sayed. Um, I'm here before anything else. I would like to thank everyone who attended this meeting. And um, we appreciate your time allotted for today. So. So we can start about the regional universities available that we have here in NSW. Um, we have University of Newcastle, which is located at Callaghan, New South, uh, New South Wales. We have University of Wollongong, which is located as well in Wollongong Northfield, at Northfield Avenue. We have available University of New England, which is located at Armidale. And we have Charles Sturt University, which is located at Bathurst. And in uh, Southern, Coast, Southern Cross University, which is located at, uh, into destination, it's Cops Harbor and Lismore. Next, please. Okay, so to add it to that, we have different, um, of course, for information technology, we have different courses available. So for Master of Data Science, uh, Data Sciences, Master of IT, Master of Information Technology, Specialization in Professional Computing. So we have uh, one of this university offered a scholarship program, which is 30% um, um, or otherwise um, up to 50%. This will depend on how they will assess each of the student application. So the university will decide if it's 50% or 30% 30, 30 scholarship. Next, please. Okay, so this is the sample computation. So the standard tuition fee of each for each semester is 13,556. And if you are qualified for a scholarship uh, with international ex excellence, most especially if you're coming from offshore. So offshore is um, any country country um, outside Australia. So um, if you are qualified for international excellence, you are qualified to uh, pay only for 6,778. Otherwise, if you're qualified for 30%, so you'll be paying 9,448 each semester. So just to clarify everything, this will decide uh, the information that we have provided here will the decision making will be depend on the university itself. So upon their assessment for each application. Next please. So uh, we also have included everything here, like for trade occupations for NSW, included the ACT in South Australia. So these are the comparison of the tuition fees between NSW, ACT, and South Australia. So for automotive here, for automotive here in NSW, we have uh, for two years, two years course, it's in the bracket of eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. So for the whole two years, so that's the bracket amount. So for cookery, fifteen thousand to twenty-five thousand, and then for the carpentry course, it will it will be like two years, so twenty-five thousand to thirty grand for uh, for the whole course of the uh, for carpentry, cookery, automotive. So that's the bracket, 25 to 30,000 for each course. So for ACT, if you can compare, um, it's quite expensive. So 20,000 to 26,000 for automotive. And for cookery, it's um, 18,000 to 25,000. So the difference here is like the, um, the benefit. So it's nearby the city, like the job and all. It's available in NSW, so um, we have everything there here in uh, Sydney and NSW regional area. So, and between the South Australia and ACT, we have also automotive. So, just to inform you guys, it's all. This is also um, like um, available 
or regional area. So it's just not just NSW, ACPSA, it's part of regional area as well. We can also um, give it, give, uh, enroll you to those areas. But to comparison with the NSW, we have lots of benefits here studying in NSW area, you know that, and we have, uh, uh, we have all this kind of, of besides of education and um, job opportunity, it's more easier with the cost of living here in NSW regional yeah. areas. So. Sorry, can I can I add one thing, Rovensi? Yeah, sure. Can? So sure. just one thing I just realized. So basically, guys, uh, so I think what Rovensi is trying to get across is basically when you study in NSW, what happens is you obviously, especially if you're studying in a regional area, mm -hmm. you get five points. Yep. First of all, for regional study, if you study for two years in the right course. And secondly, you, as I mentioned, it's in the middle of part of the uh, webinar, you can get eligible for the stream two, which is again, a very good stream. Like with low points, you can get invitation from the regional area. So that's another advantage. And third, and the, again, the most important that unlike other places, let's like say South Australia or Canberra, which is just one city state, but South Australia is mainly Adelaide and then there's very tiny towns across the uh, state. South NSW has this advantage. You have big, decent sized city. Lenoir would call it very big, but decent sized cities like Wollongong, Newcastle, Albury, Orange, Lisbon. You know, these are proper cities. You can uh, go to those cities and have a decent lifestyle. So, so there's a balance in terms of cost, in terms of PR prospects, and in terms of the job opportunity. So it's like a if you think about it, for, for me, my clients, I would never recommend anything to you if you have not convinced myself. You know, like that's my rule because if I'm not convinced myself about something, I would never try to push it forward. So, but this is again, that's why we made this comparison so you can get a better understanding. Like the cost wise, NSW is very competitive, which is cheaper from other as compared to other places and and with better chances for four nine one. And if you are a if a good player, you are the kind of person who can be competitive, you can get eight each, not everything done, then yeah, you, 190 is open for you. You can go for that. Right. So that's why NSW uh, is like a very competitive option even now, despite the fact we have a lot of bad publicity that will move from NSW, but it still is a very decent option. So anyways, uh, sorry uh, for uh, um, uh, uh, taking the lead. Uh, so yeah, could obviously you take it from there. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for that. And we, we have also hot occupations for NSW, which is electronic equipment trades worker automotive light and heavy vehicles and chef of course and wall and floor tiler and also carpenter so it's really um, popular now for nsw so um we also add up here for those who wanted to study bachelor of business or like looking for um cost-effective courses, which is uh, also with a higher degree. So we have, um, we are offering now um, for 2,500 for COE. So what will happen here, if you package it for diploma of one year, are you only taking a two, uh, two year course, but your, the, um, your qualification will be Bachelor of uh, Business. So it's a higher degree, you can apply graduate visa afterwards. So, the, um, the amount for the COE is only 2,500. So we can apply for the visa for, this is good for those who are going to also to extend their visas or apply for a new visa. Yep. So another one is for those who graduated and have advanced, uh, have their advanced diploma certificate. So any advanced diploma certificate you can definitely um, apply for a higher degree. So you don't have to go through bachelor and um, master course or afterwards. So this, this is called actually PQP package, which is they call this post-qualifying program for the higher degree or master degree course or yeah. So to inform you, the PQP package is non-AQF. So it's just like a qualification for you to go for a higher degree course, such as master course program. So the course, uh, the fees for this uh, enable for you to get a COE is also 2,500 for us for, to, to apply for a visa or any extent for extend, extending your visa or new application. So it's like um, a qualifying program for you to get the master course program. So, so straight away after this, 
you can definitely um, go for higher degree course of master. So the benefits in studying in regional area, as mentioned by Director Usman, is you have a 20, we have upcoming 25,000 seats available for starting 1st of July, 2022. And also you'll get, an, um, as he mentioned a while ago, that you can get an additional five points for studying in regional area as well as the good career benefit, which is um, you know, when it comes to salary, job opportunities. And also it will be um, an eligibility for 491 to 191, which is for directly to permanent residency, which is um, already explained by Director Usman a while ago as well. So furthermore, um, we have we are, we're going to introduce to you our special guest for today. He is Dr. Khaled of U Era Institute, which is located in regional area of Windsor, NSW. Dr. Khaled. Hi, uh, Dr. Khalid, I think you are still unmuted. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I just wanted to request to be unmuted. So thank you so much. Thank you so much yep. for having me today. Uh, I no would problem. like to thank uh, Asia Pacific, uh, my dear uh, friend and colleague uh, Usman, and thank you, Ramansi, for your representation. Uh, I would like to encourage everyone to really get in contact with Asia Pacific because they have a solution and they have a pathway for each one. Let's, re let's agree, all of us, that there is no one size fits all. Maybe we are all studying, but doesn't mean that all of us, we have the same options. Some people, they have a lot of options, but they are not aware of it. So don't miss the opportunity until you know, until you knock the door, until you ask about your situation, and they will be able to tell you more about it. Today, I'm here to talk about a special opportunity. A lot of people talking about the regional, usually they think that they have to travel to different states. Or maybe if you are in New South Wales and you want to go to regional, you have to travel at least four to six hours to be in regional. What I want to say that you still can be in Sydney and only 20 minutes from Blacktown and also you will be in regional. Where? In Windsor. So. Our campus, actually New Era Institute, we have two campuses, one in the city, CBD, one in Windsor. The one in Windsor has all the privilege of regional New South Wales. Not only that, also we have uh, uh, all the occupation that you, you heard from Usman this uh, presentation, that all the occupations that you believe that will help you for your pathway Sorry, we will have to. Uh, do you, if you have any question for Mr. Khalid, you can go ahead right now. The migration side will keep it towards the end. So yeah, yeah, for Mr. Khalid, yeah. Yes, so yes. the thing is, the Windsor Regional Area you are saying that is for just a, it will be just a regional point, isn't it? It won't be uh, for any RDA under. It won't be any un, under any RDA. Yes, that's correct. And I believe uh, Usman can. I, I'll explain that actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you. Uh, so basically, um, so yeah. So basically, uh, when we say regional points, you get five points. Now you can use those points to apply for the four nine one or one nine four nine one eight nine or the uh, the one ninety is up to you. So for example, um, if you it oops, if it uh, I think I should have made this very clear at the start. Uh, actually, a good point question. So what happens is basically if you study in a regional area, okay, and if you're in the regional area, let's say you live in Windsor, for example, now you are obviously eligible for the 190. You're still within NSW, right? So you're still eligible for the 190. If you have a good points, you have good, uh, let's say, 8 each or 90, and you have the potential, you can vote for 190. But if you don't get 190, then we fall back on the 491 option. So remember, 491 is a backup option. It's not a main option. Our goal is to hedge ourselves. Has our bets. So essentially, what we're doing for the uh, studying regional area is that we're making uh, basically opening up the option of the four nine one to fall back on. Okay. So Dr. Khalid, I think uh, you can take it from here. Like, uh, please. So again, sure. Apologies, everyone, for the interruption. No, I uh, thank you. Honestly, uh, to have the majority coming back, this is very important. 
And I'm so excited, honestly, to continue with you and to explain more about our advantage. Uh, so back to what I was saying, that uh, a lot of people, they don't know about Windsor, about only 20 minutes from Blacktown or half an hour from Parramatta, they still can get the option of Windsor, which is regional. So uh, uh, it's as easy as the information is there. You need only to ask more about it. We provide the same options, the same privilege that you can get if you travel really to Dubbo, if you travel to Orange, you don't need to go there. It's exactly the same. So, and also it's uh, a vocational education where I believe it will be a little bit easier than uh, other type of education and also shorter in du duration. So I know majority of you, you are wise enough to decide how much you wanna pay how much you want to travel and how long you want to uh, be studying until you start your journey. So uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. If you have any question for me, I'm more than happy to have, but you are in safe hands. We trust Asia Pacific. They are our trusted agency. We're working together closely with a lot of successful cases. And I encourage all of you to ask. If you don't know, then you don't know. So please don't hesitate to ask the question. There is no right or wrong. There is always a, a chance of something that you don't know that will give you the privilege. And it sometimes it's uh, short in the corners and then you can reach even faster or easier. A lot of options there. So thank you so much for having me today. Thank you like so much for joining us. It's thank a great so pleasure much. to it's be a pleasure for us. Yeah. with uh, a great uh, professional. Honestly, uh, always learning from Usman about a lot of successful cases. And I was happy to be with you today and wishing everyone a long, happy uh, weekend. Thank you so much for Thanks Thank so you so much for joining us, Dr. Khalid. Okay. Thank yeah, you, Dr. Khalid. Yeah, so, yeah, so basically, uh, again, uh, if you notice, we have uh, you know, one course, the reason, special, special reason why I wanted Dr. Khalid to be here is because uh, we wanted to because he he's a very busy person i wanted i requested him especially to come join us for this so basically um one of the courses which are very interesting because uh, this is like wallet flow tyler now this is one course that's like a hidden gem and i i am i trust me i'm very careful when i use my words it's genuinely a hidden gem because the best part of this course is no, not a lot of people are promoting it when i look at other agencies other agents i look at other people going for different courses they don't the first thing when even when someone wants to go for a trade course this is not the first thing that comes to their mind which is good for us why because this way we can promote it we can try to basically if as students if you do this course you have two benefits huge benefits number one you are doing a course which gives you a good career pathway now i don't know if someone has built a house or not and uh, especially in Australia, and you've hired a tailor or not, bloody expensive, it's crazy expensive. So you will realize the amount of potential there is for earnings. You can open your own business in the future. You can work well, it's a high paid job. So, so these people are never out of job. And that says everything. If a wallet flow tailor, you'll never see unemployed. That's the best, best part of it. So, that's one part. The second reason, the huge benefit is because a lot of people are not doing it right now. And when I talk about this course, a lot of students, they're like, um, I never thought about this. I wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be a mechanic. Well, that's what everyone is doing. That's what everyone is ad advertising. So we have to choose a path less traveled so that we can take advantage of it. And this first move advantage is a big advantage. So when you do this, you get this advantage. You do a course which is a little unique, but still very much mainstream and open in pretty much across the board. Most states are, are taking these, uh, these occupations. So you win on multiple levels. You have your potential 190 because remember I told you for 190 NSW, it's all about the demand and supply. So technically, hypothetically, if there's only one applicant for one occupation, and you had 60 points, you still get the invitation because you're the only applicant, you're the highest applicant over there. So when you go with wall and floor Tyler, the number of people applying for this is in double digits, not even triple digits. And it's like, I'm like 40, 50, 60 people. So 
a lot of people don't even have this in their radar. So if you do course like this, automatically you have this edge. Okay. So now I'll just tell you a little bit about how the create courses work. Now you two have to do a two-year degree. Okay. And if you're already on a four five or you're in, in a, uh, a different visa other than a student visa, then you can do a just a uh, circuit three. We'll try to reduce the time, but you do a circuit three and then you follow it by one year of experience, which is called job ready program. And when you completed the whole package, you get a skill suspended as a wall and floor tiler, and you can apply with that for 189, 190, and the 491. Again, 491 is not a main option. Remember that when I say regional area, I don't intend on sending all my applicants to regional area. I don't want you to guys to just try to get the 491. My goal is for you to get the best, which is 189, 190, but have a backup ready for 491 in case things go and don't go our way. And try to, as, as you know, things don't always go our way, right? So we have to have a backup ready. And if we don't have that backup ready, then it's like we are putting all eggs in one basket and you don't want to do that, do that, right? So that's why it's one of the hardest operations. Now, again, uh, just a side note, we also have one of the best rates for insurance, for health insurance. So you can go to our website, which is a uh, uh, budgetpolicy.com and we can help you with the best rates for student visa one of the best rates in the market right now so anyways so again thank you everyone for attending uh now obviously we you have a branch you have an email address sydney for numerical at asiapacificgroup.com email there if you have any queries if you don't uh, know what question to ask just email with your resume and mention just in one or two liner like what are you intending to do and we are, we are there for you so we will take a look and let you know and i can guarantee you one thing i'll take the questions right now shortly but just letting you know one thing for us as asia pacific group the main goal is a solution that's like the main goal we have to find the right pathway for pr that we have to clear the pathway for pr it's never to just sell a course or sell an idea it's all about basically if your pathway is clear or not there are a lot of time people come to me i can't give them a clear pathway I take time. I'd say, okay, give me a couple of days. I'll fix, think of a better pathway because it's all about being honest with our clients. So we are hundred percent honest. If we think there's nothing available for you, we'll let you know. If we, we're not going to give you any shitty course just because we didn't have anything good for you. So it's never the case. And obviously as a migration agent, it's my responsibility to make sure your pathway to PR is cleared as much as possible. So again, we are there for you for that as well. So we, whatever services you need, migration, education, course change, we are there. So don't worry about it. So anyway, so I'll just take the questions. I think, uh, I think Hera, you have raised your hand. So uh, uh, can you unmute? Uh, yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Hera? Good. Thank you. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you the institute that they just introduced themselves. I think it's the ERA Institute. A, a new era, new era institute. UNA. New New Era Institute. Oh yes, yes, New Era, new era, oh, Institute. Yeah, new yeah. era Institute. Okay. Um, do they have like like just you said the diploma of community services? So in order for to be skill assessed, do we need to have three year experience? Or it's not for the it's for the colleges that are not accredited with the ACWA or for the colleges that are accredited with the ACWA for both of them. I was just bit concerned because I am about to finish okay. my diploma of community services from uh, Reach College and they are not accredited. Okay. Yeah, but uh, so, I yeah, accredited, yeah, accredited is a big problem at Aqua because when you go with Aqua, uh, you have to have an accredited course. So, Dr. Khalid, would you be able to answer that? Yeah, thank you so much. It's a really good question. Uh, for our course, it's uh, we are already in the progress of getting the accreditation. And we believe uh, maximum by September, we will be able to get it. Actually, it's before that as per our plan, but just to be in the safe uh, side, uh, by September, our course will be accredited. And I believe this will be an advantage for our students later yes. on because yes. it would save them a lot of time. Yes, and oh, effort as well. Yes, yes, and they can have a skill assessment straight away, I think. Because okay, okay. That, exactly. And that, that's a game changer because uh, uh, see, that's the thing. So, because you see, that's why we work closely with Dr. Khalid because we tell them everything we need for the migration part. So, I try to make everything clear for my clients. So, Absolutely. Mr. Khalid Absolutely. has been wonderful and you know, assisting us, and he has been uh, like a huge help because he understands the needs of students. So, even if you notice the cost in a regional area, yeah. the first time I saw his cost, I was kind of sure I called him. I like, are you sure? Because 
<laughs> most institutes, which are in the region right now, they are trying to squeeze students out of extra money. He is not doing yeah, that. He is trying to are. make the, they the, as much as they can take. Yeah. <laughs> correct. So he is trying to make it as affordable as possible and the most yeah. flexible as possible. So that way, it, that's why he understands. You know, like it's not easy for everybody to pay the fees and everything. So that's why uh, uh, that's why we got the right person on board for us. Okay. So I think so, here you have your answer. Yeah. So I I'll just, go with the, I, I just missed some of your part. Where is this new era located? Which regional area? Sorry. It's in the. It's in okay. Windsor. It's uh, it's exactly twenty minutes, twenty four minutes exactly from Blacktown. So oh, lovely. By, wow. Yes, yes, oh, absolutely. Wow. So you don't need really to travel if you want to go oh, between. Wow. Uh, yeah, from Parramatta, it's like thirty eight minutes. So it's oh, within lovely. Sydney. Honestly, it's not that far. And uh, please, you feel free to visit us anytime. We're available. Oh. We can take you. And it's okay. one of the biggest campuses in uh, Huxbury. Really, yeah. yes. I can watch for that. Yes. yes. Okay. I've seen other institutes, they have like a two window operation. So like a two room operation. And uh, I would never send my students to such colleges because I don't, if, if you're not getting good quality education out of it, you will never be able to make a career out of it. If you can't make a career, then there's no point of placing money anywhere. Yes. Simple as well, so Osman, like you said, if we studied from ACWA, we don't need three experience, right? No, three years no, experience. No, 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 we don't need that. We don't need for, that. for either a 491 or one, uh, for 491, right? Or 190, either way, we can get skill assessed, right? We, see, these are two different things. A skill assessment we can get from ACWA. Okay, they don't mm -hmm. want three years experience. Okay, they especially if it's accredited, they won't really mind it. The second thing is the NSW requirement. These are two different requirements. So, so for NS, so skill assessment, once you get it done, right now you need three years experience for most occupations. Okay. Oh, but well, for four nine one as well. No, but for again for four nine one for certain occupations they put like if you know go to their occupation list for a certain vision if you go to let's say uh, the occupation list. All the RDS available, let's say Orana, uh, Sydney, whatever, and you open it up, it will have the list of the occupation available. And out of that, they'll put a tick mark on what they want three years experience on. So, and this is like half of the occupation are with the three years experience. So, the, again, the idea is basically um, I'm not too worried about it. I'll tell you why because um, things are moving in a different direction, as I already mentioned at the start of this webinar, that the seats are so such a large number that they will have to make it easy. Okay, so, so I'm not too worried about this three-year requirement. It will go away. There's a 90% chance of that happening. Okay, so, so, uh, so don't worry about it. Anyway, so we'll go to other questions right now. So I, uh, I'll go to the messages. Okay. Thank you. So, Thank you so much for your time, both of you. Thank you so much. Not really. a problem. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So in terms of uh, the question, I'll just go with one by one. Uh, Hira has already asked. Uh, then we go with Ranji. Uh, She's saying, uh, again asking the same question as you. Session was ended earlier. What is the chance to get 190 and 80 points? This is a nurse working HK and LG and SW. Okay. Okay, so 190 is going to be uh Ranji. I don't I don't know if you're there or not, if you're there. So uh 190 is going to be hard because there's still a good competition over there, even as an RN. Okay. So the least you can go with is at least because see. If you notice, you uh, okay, I just noticed you you put in 75 plus five points. Okay. Now technically, if you uh, go with it, you have 75 points. With those five extra points of state, everyone gets it. So it doesn't change the ranking. So you have technically 75 points. With 75 point 190 is very hard, especially the next couple of months. It's gonna be very hard. Maybe one year down the road, yes, but not right now. Definitely not right now. So what uh, is yeah, I, I, it's Ran, uh, Ranji that I'm here. Actually. Hi, Ranji, yes. Uh, actually, I just, uh, because uh, I'm going to have one five more because my work experience one year going to complete in May. So okay. I will be having five more. So it would be like, as you said, 75, so it would be 80. So what's the chance is like, is there any chance to stay for the 190 at 80 by at least this financial year? Because even at there's no more no. than one. I'll be honest with you, uh, for this financial year, not at all. For next financial year, if again by if I mean ninety percent sure they will make it easier, then yes, you can try to get the one ninety. The thing is, with the I I personally have a lot of clients, registered nurses who are eighty plus. So if I have so many, then mean I in the market there will be a lot of people. So I wouldn't hold my breath for one ninety. 
in this case. If I was you, based on your profile, even if your maximum is 80, I would just go for the 490 because 190 is going to be really hard. Even though seats are getting more, things are getting easier, but it won't get that easier because with 80 points, there will be so many people at 85 points, so many of them, that's going to be hard. Okay, so at three was like according to you, at what uh, like at what would be the point they can provide this year, like in nineteen ninety five or something, whatever. Um, for can okay, so they have couple, uh, if I have to be a, like a safe number, it will obviously be ninety plus five on top, but eighty five is like the minimum. If you don't have eighty five, one ninety is very hard, very hard. Okay, thank you. Okay, not a problem. Thank you, Ranji. Uh, okay, so we have Kiran Jyot. Uh, uh, I think they are saying that if we complete 240 hours, the logbook complete one restaurant, 120 can complete in another workplace. Um, Kiranjot, if you are asking for, um, for uh, the provisional skill assessment for TRA, then yes, 360 hours can be done like that. So that's not a problem. But obviously, like uh, for uh, when you talk about the job ready program, then 50, remember one thing, because after this provision skill assessment, when you go on the 45, you have to go for the one year job ready program. And on that job ready program, you have to spend at least five, uh, eight, 60 hours, 50% of the job ready program in one restaurant. Okay. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind as well. Now, apart from that, uh, we go down. Sheikh Jangar uh, is saying that for display of community service, is there any chance to get temporary visa? Uh, no, temporary visa are not a possibility. 491 is, it is again a temporary visa, but not, if you are talking about the 485, you can't get it based on community service because that's why we found wall and flow Tyler for you because wall and flow Tyler means you can get a provisional skill assessment and get a two years visa for 485 based on wall and flow Tyler. Community service, no. Okay. So now uh, Christina asked that, uh, I'm living in Richmond and it's a view how many points I need to get the invitation for restaurant manager. Again, uh, Christina, when you talk about points, when you apply with, let's say, uh, no, again, the, 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 depending on a couple of factors, if you're applying for the 190, you need three years experience at the moment, but after when it's re relaxed, even then you would need at least 80, 85 ish kind of points to make it work. For 190, for 491, you can get it if you're stream one and you're working as a restaurant manager over there, then the points will be a lot lower, a lot lower. Then points won't really matter. The what will matter is are you working in a regional area or not? That's what matters. Okay. Ashfaqul Islam is saying that. Uh, uh, Hi, I am uh, sorry, my bad. I'm an, I'm, I, I'm an IT graduate with no PY, but 15 minutes per, can apply for phone in Um, Yes, Ashwag, you can do it. Uh, it's just that you have to, right now, if you apply, you won't get the invite, as you know. For regional area, yes, you can apply with stream three, but you need high points for that. The problem is, uh, if you've not done a PY, you'll be short of points. Okay, experience, and I don't know if uh, you don't mention if you've gotten a skill assessment done or not. Because without the professional area for IT, getting a skill assessment is all dependent on one thing, which is experience. Okay, so in IT, generally for people like if you're going with ACS, uh, you need to have either professional layer or experience of one year to get a skill assessment done. Right now, if you have not done the PY, you don't only have experience, then you have to get it done. But it has to be aligned, meaning if your degree is in, let's say, business analytics and you're doing software testing, that won't work. If you're doing software engineering and software testing, then it will work. So it has to be aligned. Okay. So that's one thing. But uh, phone nine one, it the only funding you can apply for is if you apply for, let's say, uh, 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 stream three. If you live in Sydney, if you live in region area, then you do work in your own field in region area and then apply. So up to you. That depends on your fair. Now, um, me, Max3 is saying, I don't know if you're there or not. Uh, they are saying, uh, am, am I eligible to get student visa after 4 to 5 uh, for new era courses? Yes, you are. You are eligible. You can get admission there. But contact, that's why I share my email address. Uh, just contact us. We'll check your eligibility and let you know in detail. But are you, but yeah, from what you've written, of course you can apply for it. Uh, Bhupesh uh, 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 Ray has said, Hasman, I'm, I'm an accountant living and working accountant uh, in San Diego for six months. I have 100 points. For... Okay. So, include regional points. So, you basically, you have 90 points of your own. Okay. So, you have 100 points, including regional, meaning you have 90 points of your own. Now, 90, when you talk about 90 points of your own, meaning uh, it means that you are. Uh, 
there are a lot of people at 95 points. I personally have a lot of clients in Brisbane area, Central Coast, stuff like that, in uh, far south coast, even in 90 plus points. So the if you were, as you said, you're already working for in Central Coast for six months. So for you, I would recommend because for the because of lack of backdrop option and your visa expiring, you have like seven, eight months for the eight months for the visa to be expired. You have time, you have breathing space. What you should be doing is right now continue working the job. As soon as the rules are easy, just keep an eye out for NSW rules and everything. And as soon as the things are better, go with stream one. That's what you're eligible for. And that would be the easiest way for you to get the uh, phone in, if at all, because if that doesn't work, then other things are much, much harder. So that's why we try to go for this. Okay. So, uh, Vinay said, could you run through stream one, two, and three slide briefly? Um, uh, Vinay, I'll just tell you quickly, just to make it simple. Like basically, um, actually, I'll, I'll see, let me bring that slide up again. Okay, so basically, stream one is for living and working regional area. Stream two is for studying in an SF regional area for two years. Stream three is for people who have applying for anywhere or overseas with the right points. So that's stream three. Okay, so that's again uh, uh, what you do. Now, apart from that, uh, uh, I'll just go back to the last slide again. Sorry about that. All right. So Apart from that, I'll just take a couple of more questions, guys, because we are, I think we are uh, kind of running out of time. We'll try to get to most people, but I don't think we'll be able to do that. So, um, Shubang, you are saying, hi, Isman. Um, okay. So, me, Max3 also, I think, just messaged. They're saying that, hi, this is Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, I'm in 485 right now. Of course, you are you're on 485. That's like the best visa to apply on because you have no restrictions. You can do work, study, business, whatever you want. So, yeah. So, uh, so Paul, I would say just email us your CV or resume or something, just some basic information on this CV at Are you smart? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Guys, what is people? Is it Paul? Hi. Uh, yeah. Just, um, I think there are two people talking. So, so I, I think Ali, uh, I think Paul, I just uh, addressing question first, then we'll go to Ali. Okay. Okay. Paul, okay. You, you go ahead first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My question is um, I'm on for, like the question actually is that after 485, can I do those courses in Uizo? You can. You can. The only thing is for you, the, because when you applied for the 485, and it's, or let's say it's expiring soon, let's say. Okay. If, it's expi if you have the whole three years or two years available, then yeah, then you can easily do the whole course while on the four five. But if your four five is expired and then you're going on a student after that, then we can go for the new era courses, but then you do pick and choose. Because if you go with a course like Wall and Flow Tyler, you wouldn't get a job ready program time because for job ready, you need one year of full time work rights, right? You wouldn't have that. So that's why you find a different approach for you. In that case, we find something like community service, something which will give you the assessment right after you finish the course, like enrolled nurse. You do diploma nursing, you complete the course, you get the assessment without any experience requirement, right? Wall and Fort Tyler is brilliant, no doubt, but it might not be for you because if your four is expired already or about to expire, then you wouldn't have the time to do the job ready program. It will be too long for you. I have better options then, but then I have better options for you. But obviously, uh, then we will look at your case and then we'll tell you what we can do for your particular case because then this course is not free in that case. Like you can apply for it, you can get the course admission, we can get all of that stuff, but it's not beneficial to you. Then, so, basically then, these then courses, I, yeah. so basically these courses can be done in student visa or you can move to student visa with these courses basically. You can, you can. See, there's a difference. When you use your 485 visa, okay? Yeah. So the, the problem is when you need, as you know, this is a trade course. So, you need one year of job ready program correct, after correct. the studies. 
Right. Got it, got it so that's why for you it's not a kid, but for them is someone right now. For them is someone is doing uh, MIT or someone is doing MBA and struggling with the course, and they want to transfer to this course. Yes, they can do it. They have to downgrade. They have to take a little risk, but it's a very minute risk, and you can still transfer. They can do a lot of things like that. But a person who's already used at their four eight five, then it becomes harder. Or let's say you just started on your four eight five, you can do this. But it depends on the profile. You know, that's why I started. I did give disclaimer. Not everything is for everyone. But if you make a decision, we are there for you. We'll help you out with it. So don't with me. Uh, so Paul, don't worry about it. Uh, just email us. Uh, I, I, this email goes directly to Rovensi, our education counselor. She will assess the case. We'll discuss. To, she discuss with me, and we'll come to a better solution for you. So don't worry about it. Sure, okay. we'll do that. I just have just quick one last one, which is yeah, yeah. Um, I got um uh, four eight five on um, which is expiring on twenty um third twenty twenty three April. So yeah, one yeah, yeah. one year okay. more left. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. Basically, you know the new uh, four eight five peoples are getting three years uh, visa now. Correct. So is anyhow yes. I will be eligible to get one year extension in that? No. Basically? No. Unfortunately, no. I wish you could, but no. They're not allowing you. But, uh, oh, so it's only for people who uh, who got the grant on or after twenty fifth of November, twenty twenty one. So yeah. Uh, but people was also staying in Sydney. They also affected because I was sitting at home for eight months doing nothing. No, I, 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 I completely understand. Trust me, I'm affected. Everyone's affected. We all affected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I, uh, I gained a lot of weight. I wasted a lot of time. It was a, like a dark memory, you know, staying at home, working from home. It was depressing. But, but we all went through that. So, but again, that's that's how it is. You know, we have to. Um, the government is being nice. But they're not going to be too nice. Remember that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. All right. No problem. Thanks. Hi, uh, so much, Paul. hi uh, Ali. Uh, hi, Ali. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Good. Uh, just a quick question. Like, I'm studying and living in Wollongong and doing master's yeah. in environmental engineering. It's supposed okay. to be finished on this June. So, okay. uh, I'm a bit interested in stream two, 491. So, does any work experience required? No. For stream two, work experience is not required. Uh, depend again depends on your occupation as well. But let me quickly take a look. For environmental engineer, it's not straightforward. But I just need to make sure your occupation is correct. Just give me a moment. Let me quickly. Yeah, sure. Ahead. Using engineering, right? Yeah, I have done bachelor's in chemical engineering back okay. in Pakistan, and uh, yep. now I'm pursuing. Masters of Environmental Engineering from University of Wollongong. Okay, okay, that's that's good. Actually, I am also an alumni of U of W. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yes, yes. So let me quickly find the right thing for you. Yes, yes. <clears throat> And the meanwhile, like uh, how many years of uh, uh, TRI can avail? So basically, uh, obviously, during masters, automatically you get three years at the start, and if you okay. continue living in regional area, you get one more year at the end. So you have pretty okay. much four years locked in. If you continue to uh, live in regional area. Okay, and uh, there is a one problem. Like, uh, is there any time limitation? So just uh, so just letting you know one thing. Yes, environmental engineer is available. You can go okay. with that. Yes, it is there. And no experience is required. No, no, I, I've totally checked. Uh, experience is required again. Right now, see, right now it's available in a few places where experience is required. Actually, okay. except for stream, okay, so stream one, experience is not required. For everything else, three, experience three years is required right now. But as I said, things will shuffle up. So shuffle keep up, an eye okay. on the list uh, probably in July or August, it will be updated. So, it's there right now, but remember one thing, your occupation is very a niche occupation. Not a lot of people are doing it. Okay. okay. So that's going to help you. That's going to play a, play, a, play a part. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So last, last question is that I got, I got stuck in Melbourne uh, while uh, uh, in the initial phase of my degree. I did one semester there. I, yeah. I wasn't able to relocate. Does it impact my TR thing for three years? It does because, uh, so not for three years. Three years you're going to get because you're doing a master's course. Okay, so you're going to get yeah. three years anyway. Whether you sit in Melbourne or Sydney, it doesn't matter, or Wollongong. 
that one extra year you get at the end of your 485, that extra uh, uh, one year for the uh, regional study, that could be affected. Yeah. So like uh, living, uh, I just like four or five months I lived over there and rest of the study. So basically, I was, we have, oh, so, uh, so basically the general formula is that at least 16 months you have to live in Wallowa. 16 oh, months. Yeah. Okay. If you've done okay. that, you should be fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All, right. All yeah. good. All good. No right, no Thank, Thank you, you so much, much uh, uh, Ali. So yeah. Uh, so uh, can I ask? Good deep. Uh, can you? Uh, yes. So I've actually posted yes. my question. So basically, I'm on that condition. I've applied uh, for four nine one, and had it eighty five points. But I've applied twice. I think in the November January window and the last window March window. Uh, uh, yeah. What, yeah. What's your question, uh, uh, Goodie? Software engineer. Okay, yeah, software, software engineer is competitive. That's a problem because there are a lot of IT graduates in the uh, market right now. So there's uh, the NSW is getting a lot of application. The problem was because 190 got three years experience requirement. So all yeah. the, the software engineers with 95, 90 point, even some of like my own clients, they I convinced them to wait, but some of them still wanted to apply for the 491. So because of them, the points got up really high. But as soon as the requirements are eased off in 190, automatically the points will drop in 490, automatically. But the question is like, I'm going to lose that contract in May from the Newcastle and I got a okay. job in Sydney again and I'm going to be working online, of course, from Newcastle. But I, I, I'm I, not sure I can able to apply for 491 stream one. I think I've applied it, living and working that stream. So I'm not sure I, I will be eligible for the same stream or not because I won't be working in Newcastle. You did not get with stream one, you did not get it with 85 point of your own. Uh, no, uh, 85 is including 15 points. Okay, yeah, that's what that's what that, that is. That is, that is, that is surprising. Like, but stream one, you would have gotten, but yeah, so 70 is, yeah, because 70 would be on the lower side. So, um, so basically, see if you're up in a um, let's say up, up working for home. Working from home is not considered regional work technically, right? Now, this is like a gray area here, mm -hmm. but the general assumption is basically if you're working from home, that will not be considered regional area. But at the same time, if you have a project in a regional area, or you have some kind of presence in a regional area, then yes, you can still no, consider there, is, there yeah. is no presence of in the regional area. Yeah, so so that that that, that will be a problem then. But you see, you can still apply though. See, the problem here is that. If, uh, I don't know if you guys know or not, if you get refused from NSW from 491, you will get, you cannot apply for the one year period, right? So, so that's another factor that if, if you really show you can get the nomination, only then apply. That's why you let us know before you apply because a lot of time people make mistakes on for ROI, registering interest, and they get refused because then, then they are banned for one year. They cannot apply for the one year. So that's why you have to be careful about that as well. But, uh, but good deep, sorry, uh, you have to be careful with the points. You're at 70. You yeah. have to take it up. Because yeah, I'm trying to. What how easy NSW gets? Soft engineer, there are a lot of them. I, if I just look at my Excel sheet, I'll get like, I'm pretty sure 80 to 90 soft engineers that I have alone. So you have to level up about that. Yeah. Okay. And I've mm -hmm. actually, when I was doing masters, I have done the job as well simultaneously. I'm not sure that experience is going to count or not. Oh, job what? What job? Uh, as a software engineer, I was working when I was doing masters from uh, Charles Sturts University from Sydney, and no, I was working as well. No, no it that won't work. Uh, it, it's only after the uh, uh, basically the uh, completion of the studies. Yeah. Okay. It's post study. Okay. Yeah. It's post study. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. So yeah. So Thank guys, uh, I have to cut it. Like I, I will take a few more questions. Okay. I'll just because obviously we uh, so like a limited time. And also I'm fasting, so I have to run, but I'll try to keep it, uh, just take a few questions, just uh, quickly take over, uh, care of. Usman, Usman, you better break yeah. your fast. It's getting run off <laughs> time. Sorry? You better break your fast. You're getting late. Yes, I know that. That's why I'm just trying to, uh, because there's a lot of things going on right now. So I just, uh, I'll, I'll do it. Don't worry. Yeah. So, uh, guys, just, I have to pick and choose few questions I have to answer and I don't have to run. So sorry for that. So I just try to answer. Obviously, you have an email address. Feel free to contact us. Whatever we can answer, we'll answer you for that. But we, we can't. We'll let you know. We will uh, uh, we can screen whether you are for the PR side or student side. We'll help you with that. So just 
uh, bear with us. So, okay, Shubang, you are asking like, uh, what a chunk of 490 or 190 in civil engineering profession in NSW, what's required uh, or important move in a specific region area of 491 currently, uh, okay. So, civil so engineering is again, a very good occupation, really good occupation, but uh, that doesn't mean much without the points. So if you are in civil engineering occupation, you will get the invitation. Uh, we got 190 invite with 90 points only, but you have to have 90 points at least. You have to have decent points. If you don't have the decent points, it's going to be really hard. And you are on, uh, you've completed a master project engine as well. And so you are, okay. So, um, so Shubhan, you are in a very comfortable spot. You are, you have a bridging with A for a 485. So your four five have not been started yet. So you're going to get three years. So you can literally plan out perfectly the whole pathway. But for that, obviously we come to our so consultation, we'll guide you how to do that. Okay. So, but good profile, you can really make it happen. Now, Samantha said, I have a uh, finished diploma of child care. What can I get? Yeah. Child care. Again, child care is one of the contradictory occupations. It's a good occupation. The problem with uh, child care is that you have to get work as a child care center manager. The other occupation, child care worker. Now, child care worker doesn't give you much. It only gives you four nine four visa, so that it's no it's no use. Child care center manager, you get the two years four five visa. That's what you can get out of that. But you cannot get a PR out of that because child care center manager occupation requires you to work as a manager. That's a keyword, and no child. Oh, sorry, no organization will make your child care man manager just uh, uh, just fresh graduate. So that's why it's it not the best occupation. That's why I don't really recommend this occupation very often. And uh, like, yeah, unfortunately, this is not the best one. And a lot of people, you know, like I, I noted, like a lot of agents, they just recommend this. Occupation. They look at a woman, they're like, she will like this course and sell it. They don't do that. It's not worth it. Okay. So unfortunately, but we have, we'll have a better path if you email us. We explain what else can you do. Okay, so there's another person asking me. Uh, how they is saying about the DGS says after 80 points or not? Regional area, okay. First in Sydney and perhaps stream three and move to regional area. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, you will automatically get a huge advantage if you go to regional area. Obviously, because if you have 80 points of your own, okay, I'm talking about your own point, not the state points or regional point, your own 80 points, you're in a good position. You will, if you uh, go to skill assessment done and you applying uh, with stream three, will NSW. See, remember, there's a big difference here. You have, you have to understand this. For stream three, which you are applying in Sydney, there are a lot of guys applying that. There are a lot of guys applying for Adelaide. There are a lot of guys applying from uh, Perth. So they might have 85 or 90 points. So you can to compete with them. So it's going to be really hard competing in Sydney. So if you want to change the game, go to Easy Area. It will help. If even if you're in stream three, they ask you on the ROI that, are you living in the Easy Area? If you say yes, that gives you additional benefit. I've seen that happen. Okay. So that does help you. So um, apart from that, uh, and one more thing, like uh, right now I'm on uh, yes, like four, eight, four eight five breezing visa and I'm uh, planning to move regional and I want to study as well. So what should you recommend for study like trade? If you, if you're on a bridging visa, Hardik, I think the best thing would be if you go for something, as I said, unique or something which is going to hit the bullseye in one shot. So, so again, this is what I call a one shot kill. You know, you do something straight, you get, so which is again, one of, one of the, Three fourth option we can think about. One of the options is wall and floor tiler. Okay, but every occupation has an advantage and disadvantage. But for that, email us your profile. If you just email okay. a couple of lines, just to just to explain the same thing, uh, just copy paste okay. it, uh, and I'll team get back to you. Uh, obviously, it's a holiday coming up, but Tuesday, Wednesday, we we'll definitely get back to you. Don't worry about it. Okay, so um, uh, 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 we are there for you. We will explain you if you because see. Uh, our agenda is not one course of second goal. Our agenda is simple that whatever clears the pathway for you. Okay, whatever right. it is, we'll do that. Simple like that. For me, if I'm talking you know, Hardik Patel, my goal is Hardik Patel has to get the PR in the next one or two years or three years, whatever is the earliest possible. That's my goal. Okay, so. Uh, uh, so according to you, sir, should I, I should like uh, start moving towards like this now. So that yes, I that that does help. That definitely helps. That definitely helps. But don't again see moving is not enough. That's what I'm saying. Like moving without a plan is of no use, right? It's like it's like saying that I went to a Mercedes showroom and I threw hundred thousand dollars. I didn't get a car. Of course, you won't get a car. You go to your Mercedes. You tell them which car you want. You tell them what you want. You pick and choose. That's what you do. So that's the that's the idea. So if you just do something, doing basic stuff is not enough anymore. You have to plan. 
you have to have strategize it right so that's the idea so that's what you have to go for okay so yeah uh, so yeah guys i have to leave again as i said i'm fasting either so i would love to take more questions but email us we'll be able to answer you as many things that we can do it okay so uh, i uh, so but we but just letting you know we will be having a lot more webinar sessions okay so uh, we will be having this uh, constantly so we will be assisting you with whatever you want and if you want particular topics let us know we'll make a tiktok video youtube video whatever needs to be done whatever needs to be done to get the information across we'll do it for you simple as that okay, okay. so uh, uh, guys Uh, all right thank you there are you let us know uh thank you so much for all for attending uh there's still 20 people so thank you so much take care guys good evening thank you enjoy um, the weekend um as we mentioned those who we didn't like look after and if you have personal queries please free to send us your e- uh send us an email or send your resume otherwise you can visit our office and meet us in person we will there uh, we will surely assist at you for any questions that you have and moreover um if you have individually if you have further questions we can arrange an um, like an appointment with director usman our registered migration and once again we thank you for all your time allotted today and um as well as please please Feel free to contact us. Thank you so much. Have a have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you.